here up top, which I think the wind's so dead that it's pointing straight ahead right now. Yeah. Because we're going, going yeah, of course. <laughs> we're making the wind, and what little wind there is. Um, so we can actually, we don't have to point in one direction uh, to raise it right now, but usually you go point to the wind. And then until that, yeah, that arrow is coming there it is. When you're standing where you are now, what you do is you kind of put your head against the uh, back side here, and you look through the hole. That's right side. above you. Right there. So other side? Yeah. You close one eye, and you see the little arrow at the top? Yes. The little pointy pointy to the back of it. But uh, that's what you make sure it's straight ahead like that. Gotcha. Before you raise the main. Uh, that's for dropping or raising it. So what are we do doing here? All right. Fixing and raising the main. Is Nikolai and what? Brian. 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 Video I know, 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 Turn off Yeah, you'll, you'll, look like yeah. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, there's a little. Let's turn let's back. Let's turn it back like, the other way. Yeah. yeah. I guess it was just a tiny. <laughs> right there. We just happen to be in it. How deep is it right now? It's probably about 8 feet. 8 feet? Something like that. What do you see? 11. 11 feet, yeah. And this is where I usually come out and just anchor here when we want to cleanse the bottom. Flip, one big flip. 20 feet deep. No, it's going to be 11. 12 feet. That's pretty good. That's better than a lot of adults I know. Yeah, All right, so it's a little bit more to the right. What are you looking at up there? So we're looking at this little arrow. We just want the arrow to be pointing straight forward ahead of us. Okay. The wind thing? Yeah, the wind thing. Oh, yeah. You see it? Yeah. It's just a low wind. It's like there. So we have to be in perfect with the wind vane to raise there the sail. All right, Dominique, start ripping it up. Come on, Ryan, come on. It's Dominic. Sorry. Oh, Dominic, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'll stick with Ryan. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Come on. Come on, Ryan, come on. Come on. All right, Nicola, you might need to spot him a little bit. Spot him, Nick. Yeah, there you go. Pull, pull, pull. It's All nice. right, good job. And so then, once it starts getting hard to pull, what you do is you put it around this little uh, winch right here. Okay. You get a little bit even more. That last little bit. So it's nice and tight. You see the front of the sail is called the luff. You want that to just be nice and, nice and straight up. And then what you do is you just tie it to the cleat right here, and it will roll. Okay. Okay, yeah, so. I'm videotaping so we'll you. Pull it's okay. To the left. Yeah, yeah, and so right now it's not fully set up because it's not the right size sail. Uh, normally that's where you get your speed from. Huh? It's usually what you get your speed from. Yeah, yeah, it makes it both. Uh, sure, there's similar size sails. Usually you'll, you'll pull up the main first and then you'll do that one. Nikolai, be careful. So yeah, follow us off even more. Just hard left here. There's a, there is a ledge that is straight ahead. So yeah, I see it over here. So yeah, if you want to come look at the, the sail or something, I kind of hold. Um, She's going to Or sleep. maybe if you know, one of y'all want to look, or maybe you want to be. Okay. She's going to sleep. Yeah, no, it's all good. Sorry. Um, actually, I could probably just, because it's such low wind, let's just throw it in neutral. Come check it out. So, um, <laughs> I can scare from here. So it's got a really easy uh, system for reefing. Uh, so you can see, so that's what these two lines, the green and the red are, hanging 
gonna pop the bottom. No, yep. The top, you have to keep those loose. Uh, no, they don't need to be loose right now. They just need to make sure they're not like. Yeah, well, they're not like pulling any pressure onto the sail itself when you're not using them. So right now the sail is extended, so it's like completely tighter. Um, well, actually, no, we're going to be a little bit looser. The sail's not a yeah, just a tiny bit. Just because, I mean, usually when you're sailing, it's a cooler, and you'll, you'll see it like out. But anyway, so you can see the red line, it goes up to here. Roll it across. This is the middle line. And then uh, this little island. So what you would do if, if you know that it's like it's like something that's going to be or something a little bit messy or you know it's going to be let loose on the main halyards and it's going to be a main halyard. Also ring on the other side and another front one. I'm going to ring on the other side and another front one. And then once you do that, you'll come back here and you'll, you'll untie this and you'll pull this system which will pull, that will anchor, so that's anchoring the front of the sail down, then you'll anchor this part down by pulling it, and we'll tie it off. And then you'll use this line, which goes on the other side as well, and we'll tie it reef Or, uh, that's where the hook's square not, hook square not, square not slash hook line. The same thing. Uh, but yeah, you can see the sail's in good shape. Uh, we've got several more years on it. Two areas where it's like, you know, got a little bit of fray, watch out for like this thing right here an eye on that is still another one but there's usually there's not too much pressure on the back here because it's like it's all ran through the mass so it's like all coming in. Um, yeah yeah so that's that's this line here and this no, I mean, I, so I'm just kind of guessing. I'm pretty sure because I've never messed with this. So. Maybe this? Is it red? Yeah. Red. So, it, so, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, if we were doing, if we had the head sail out, or we didn't have it out yet, usually the lines for the, for these glasses. Sorry, yeah, that's fine. I don't want to step on them. Uh, but yeah, usually so the lines from the head sail would be coming back here, sitting back here. Pretty permanently. You'd have one on your port side, one on your starboard. Whenever you're ready to throw out the head sail, what you would do is you would just you would pull on one side or the other. By the way, I'm about to pull it out right now. Okay. Uh, but we're not it's not the right way, I'll just show you. I'm just okay. kind of explaining it. But yeah, you'll pull out uh, on whichever side is leeward, you'll you'll wrap it around the winch and you'll pull it out. You'll make sure that this, which is the um, it's a cup. The furler line, so oh, it's attached to the drum no at the angle. bottom. You just make sure that this is a little loose when you're pulling it out, so that way it's not going to uh, get caught. What does this fill up for the main here? Say what? What is this? This, furler this line? goes to the furler. Yeah, it goes to the head sail. So, okay. Yeah, so it goes to the head sail, and oh, then. I want to dip my toes in. Come so down. you would just pull on one side, and it would come out, and then when you're ready to pull the sail back in. You're recording me without permission. Ryan, let me take this up there so you can catch what he's saying. Get this on video. We need it all on video. Go catch him up quickly. Do do my camera. Step up here. Nick, Nick, I'll step up here. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, if you'll just step up there. <laughs> wow. Oh, and then untie that line by your right foot around that cleat. Right here? Yep. Stand up. So you can see it's a pretty big sail. Goes back all the way. The length of is perfect. Oh yeah, you might have to un. <laughs> Sorry, I had things. No, the um, the the ring at the bottom. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Stop 
So anyways, you can see how it's, uh, yeah, it just drops down way too low there. So yeah. you'll just get one that's about two, about a foot and a half shorter. You want the bottom ring to be attached to that shackle at the base, like right above the drum. Okay. Um, it's what normal would be. And then what you would have is you would have this same line. All right, now I have it tied at the end because I don't need it both sides. But imagine that you had it tied in the very middle center of the entire line. So that way you have one line for port side and one for starboard, even though it's one line. So you would have this, if we were sailing a strong wind over here, you'd have this tied down to the uh, the winch. And then you would have, this would just kind of be loose and it would probably go around the stays and kind of be sitting back over here. Um, but I know it's the right length because this was what I, the line I used on the last one. Uh, so yeah, you would just find the dead. basically just tie it around itself okay. yeah, figure it out um, so yeah and then to so now this is gonna be a little bit tricky and I found yesterday I'm gonna kind of maybe have it folded just a tad like this as I start reeling it in so that way this isn't sticking out the bottom yeah All right, so to do the opposite, to take it back in, you'll use the winch here. And what you'll do is I'll just ravel it in. Um, Dominique, yeah. Dominique, uh, Dominique. We, we put a little bit of pressure on that white line right there. This one? Yeah, just a, just a tiny bit, just to keep the sail out. Yeah, pull it towards me. Yeah, there you go. All right, Nick and I have to do it. <laughs> oh, you gotta keep a little bit of tension on it. Well, Ryan, don't drop it. the phone. Put the phone down. <laughs> it's, yeah, so just, yeah, you just pull it out a little bit. Yeah, it's actually probably yeah. fine. Yeah, a little bit more. There you go. And now, now I'm gonna pull it, and so you'll, you'll let go, but just keep it just enough tension that. There you go. You can let a little less tension. And the, the reason for that is if it's too loose, like what, what it just was. All right, you can loosen some more. And we'll just do a couple wraps around. Storm ready. And then tie that off. Um, we're still in the same place we were. Um, I need you to get the phone and get what he's saying. This one probably, if you had one that was the perfect size, it probably wouldn't pop out, but what would happen is this kind of it slides up and up. down. But yeah, if you, uh, if you have it tight like it is, it's not going to, as long as there's like some pressure pulling out. No, that's, that's just like what I said. Yeah, right there is good. And that's what I said earlier too, it's like, you can keep it like it. It's not is it ideal, no, but yeah, you, you maybe fix it. Maybe when you're taking the head sail down, you could also just take the head, head stay down and service it or see if you can find online on eBay or something. Just a new, you just really just need the bottom drum. Okay. Um, it's usually good to leave the line, just kind of let it hang, kind of always check, double check everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's think. Oh yeah, you guys want to jump in the water, right? Sure. Yeah. I'll just okay, dip my so we'll, we'll drop the anchor then. Let me uh, pull this. Ooh, First, we'll drop the mainsail. All right, put it on. Not that it's doing anything, anyways. Hey, is it okay if we put this on this beanbag, this phone, or whatever? It'll be should be straight right there. Straight. So yeah, as long as the beanbag doesn't look. Like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, Nikolai, I got a job for you to do. We're going to drop the sail. Normally, I'm going to want to point into the wind to drop the sail, but honestly, I don't think it's going to matter too much. Now we have. So what you're going to do, Nikolai, you're going to go up to that green and white line that we were pulling earlier. So you're going to untie it from here. Yep. That's called a cleats. And then you're going to keep a little bit of pressure on it. Don't let drop it yet. 
And then when I tell you we're going to slowly drop it, we're going to do what's called flaking the main sail. That just basically makes it so that it falls clean on itself. Uh, if you want to just help Edgy slowly drops it, we'll just kind of do like one side. Just don't get that's the biggest thing you're going to watch out. If there's a lot of pressure. Okay. Let him work it down like you say he's going to flake it. So go ahead and let down a couple feet maybe. Easy. You need to hold it tight. And there won't be too much back there. Right? So yeah, just kind of, what I like to do is start having, particularly someone in the back is really useful. Sometimes if you're solo sailing, it's a little trick. You know, Got to clean it up later. All right, let down some more. Perfect. You can go a little bit faster. All right, one more. A little bit more. All right, keep it going. Just keep it steady. Yeah. Perfect. This is going to be your main job, okay? Sure. <laughs> you got a lot of sound to do this winter. Y'all are going to stay here through the winter, right? Oh, that's going to be awesome. That's it, man. <laughs> Compared to Wisconsin? <laughs> so we're, in Ar we're in Arkansas. Oh, yeah, Arkansas, that's right. <laughs> Same. Yeah, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna make any snowmans this winter. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. Letting it drop. All right. If you wouldn't mind grabbing that most colorful one by your foot. You start there at the back, don't you? Yeah. Okay. I'll throw that on just to keep it from falling apart. You um. Put the bungee cord around and, uh, it. Yeah, the, there's one that will probably be the most lengthy one. That's going to be for the front. There's going to be a middle sized one. We'll do in the middle. So we'll see how take this. Bungee cord right. goes around so it. That's, I meant the, uh, like on the mast. The one here usually. Here. Replace these. This thing is, we'll go, we'll go through it. Now there's going to be a whole water usually on it. And then and then what we'll do is we just want to make Campers. sure there's the last little bit, the last part yeah, down. Okay. So that way, yeah, you get it. And it doesn't really matter, like a day like today, but if it was really windy, yeah, you could catch it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you keep this tied off like and tie yourself? Right <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty. I'm gonna have to jump in myself just to cool off. Um, I wanna jump in. Yeah, it's so yeah, I'll usually pull it, but not so that it's like pulling too much up on the top, but just enough so that it's. So it's grabbing the cleat, you know, just a little bit. Yeah, just so it's not flying, flapping around. I wanna dip my feet in. Uh -huh. Yeah, because go I really do not care. Stop it. So remember when stopping the motor, it's just this pool to stop here. You don't have to worry about the key at all. Um, and you want to make sure that you don't pull it slow hard. enough that it's like choking itself. So just a nice, slow, easy out. Um, you'll feel it. I thought it was a ripcord earlier, so I would have just... <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. I don't even know how to replace that part. I haven't even looked at it, but <laughs> probably. All right, now the I anchor. I want to sit down the anchor. You don't want to. All right. So as far as the anchor, so like I said, uh, there's no windlass. It's just a manual thing. I like to kind of think of it as just a just good little in. arm well, exercise. Size, yes. Dropping it down isn't bad. So the way it sits, <clears throat> it won't just fall like because no you rocks. need to like lift it over. Just a little knuckle past. That part, and especially when, when you're pulling it back up, you'll see it'll get caught again. You kind of have to lift it up and over. And just let it drop. Let it drop, but you don't want to just let it drop. You're yeah. walk. You don't want to walk it out. So that way, the, it's not oh, running yeah, on the fiberglass and hurting the floor. <laughs> We're not going to let a very lot out. Usually, if, if you're like staying somewhere overnight, you want to at least, it's, they say seven to one. Seven to that's one. usually with the road and with chain. You can get away with five to one. That's usually five to one depth. Okay. Five. So of water, you want 50 feet out. Um, and there should be, I mean, it's somewhere between 60 and 90 feet. I, I thought it was 90, but I swear it's a little less. 
since there's barely any wind and we're not going to be here long anyways, I'm just going to let that much out. And then I have this line right here, which is an old, um, it's like a firefighting line. It's, it's strong. It doesn't burn. It's hard to cut. And what I'll do is I'll just feed it through part of the chain. And I'll tie it around the feet. That should block it from moving. Yep. Exactly. Mama, can we at least get our feet in? And that's holding us there. This is that water outlet I was talking about. Sure. Um, so there is a key inside. Usually I leave it loose enough that I can just untie it. That is going to be for our uh, fresh water? Yep. So you'll fill up that. There are, oh yeah, I didn't mention earlier, um, there are two filters. One for to the head, the water in the head, and then one underneath the cushions right before it gets to the sink. Okay. Um, I never drink out of the water on here <laughs> what i do i don't know if you notice but there's a few gallons yeah, of water yeah. i usually will just fill those up and drink out of that it's just because i have a filter on the hose and i know i can clean that out it's something about when the water's sitting in those tanks for so long so it's supposed to be anonymous. yeah but they some people do and some people you'll add just a tiny bit of bleach and stuff yeah so you can do that but uh personally i always put up there this is the waste same thing as that I don't so like that's to touch what you're talking about. It comes Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, yep. Friday. Or so around 10 a.m. when when you ask them to come out, like you know, this morning, it comes around somewhere between 10 and 11. He'll come out and you'll hear him step on the bow and he'll you know, suck in. You can hear him like actively sucking it out. Uh, it hasn't happened much, but it's probably about two times over the last four years. I mean, he'll let, they'll let you know because they can feel like they do it. They do so many boats a day. They, um, they know when there's not good suction. They'll like knock on the door or something and be like, hey, there's a problem. There's a little air valve in here that sometimes if it gets really full, stuff will get backed up into it. What you'll want to do is you'll just get a little hose and just spray it in there. Okay. And, and then he'll come back later in the day and try it again. Okay. And, yeah. Um, yeah, you can't really see it. Yeah, it's like right under. Okay. It's just a little valve. Right. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's right there. But it's in the just red. something when I remember when it first happened, I'm like, dang it. The heck? <laughs> do I have to take the entire like system apart? Like this dreaded. <laughs> oh, um, handrails too. Talk about those. Uh, these are Ipe wood. I replaced them myself in 2019. Um, it was oh, it used to be teak. You know, it was mm -hmm. so thin. You'd stand on it, and it would literally flex. This mm -hmm. is this is hard. hard. This wood is dense. It literally doesn't even float if it goes in the water. Yes. Um, but I have tongue oil on it. I used to be so like good about it. Like every couple of months, I'll just, you know, add a new layer. Mm. Um, with that, ever since I got that sun cover being down here in Key West, it kind of rubs on the side. Mm -hmm. So you can see on the side here, it's almost like it's sanded a bit. Yeah. Um, okay. I have extra tongue oil in there. What you would do is you would just, you would just sand, just do a very light sanding and then add the oil. Um, you don't you have to worry about. Huh? You wouldn't polyurethane it? You could. Um, I don't know. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of polyurethane, especially if it's a thin yeah. layer and it starts, once it starts cracking, mm -hmm. then it's just like, it just doesn't look the best. Mm -hmm. But, um, but that would definitely make it last longer. But the only thing is if you're going to keep that sunshade up, it's going to weather this the same way it weathered that top little, mm -hmm. uh, little yeah. sacrificial. So just, just so you know, but yeah, I have tongue oil down there and behind the head, there was like okay. a little door of like like bleach and all sorts of other chemicals I don't want to keep the kids away from. <laughs> all right um all right i guess now's a good time to show you in this locker as well oh snorkeling gear snorkeling Ooh. gear yes sir we have uh so all of this comes with it yeah man absolutely so only two full sets My of snorkel gears <laughs> <laughs> yeah these are like one size fits all yeah they'll probably fit you guys you just tighten it down extra good um, for now, it's just going to be the parents. Parents looking downstairs. You got this mask does not have a great seal. Just so you know, it's going to leak quick, especially with facial hair. There's no oh yeah, yeah. Hair. She's like, oh, she um, but yeah, the rest of the stuff in here. If you need to ever climb the mast, this is a uh, a ladder. ladder. So you would, you would take those little pegs out from the mast, okay. and then you would raise these ones up you would attach the uh the halyard that raises the, the sail you would attach it to the top of this and you'd raise that up and tie it off good just like we did when we raised so yeah okay. 
Right. Exactly. And then um, when you do that, of course, you still always want to have someone as a spotter, something I don't need to tell you really, but you'll have like her. Like, Any, anything, man, yeah. knowledge is, is power. Yeah, and so I have a harness here for you. So you strap this to yourself and you have another, the other halyard attached to you. And so you'll be climbing, but she'll just be like, she'll have a wrap around the winch. In case you do fall, that gives her a little extra strength. And then she'll just kind of guide you up. Right. And if you do fall, you'll only hopefully be just like a foot or so. And she can hold it because she's got up that winch power. And then when you're coming down, of course, she'll just okay. let it down as you climb. Um, Here's this little scraper for the bottom. I usually just get a new one of these every time. I just kind of keep the old one. It just it, once it gets this plastic off, it starts rusting. Yeah, it's um, just sheet rock scraper. That's all it is. Yeah. Sheet rock scraper, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like eight bucks yeah, at yeah. Home Depot. Yeah. I would suggest though, starting off, if you're going to clean it yourself, you can hire someone to clean it. It's maybe like seventy bucks, uh, seventy to hundred, depending on who you hire, and it'll probably last them about an hour. You'll, you'll just do it every three months. Yeah. But like I said, I like to just come out. It's an excuse to come out for the day. Yeah, yeah. Swim around, check out your boat. Uh, but anyways, when you're first starting, I would use the plastic ones. Yes. So that way you're not scratching the, not the paint. In. Like I kind of did it enough where it's like I kind of can feel it. And like I know there's certain like areas where I will use a little plastic one. Because okay. it's like more of like a harder angle. But for like big flat areas, like this is, this is a lot better. Anyways. Yeah, so actually so there's two in there. Here's a winch handle for once you get that. Um, head sail, you can pop it in. And... Okay. Oh, it's so. Oh, there should be another one somewhere. Um, extra lines in here. Uh, we have plenty of life. I think there's 10 life jackets like this. Uh, and then there's also this nice safety gear sack. Uh, it has four more life jackets and a square floaty like these. Yeah. Um, and then you have access to the back here if you ever need to work on the rudder or the rudder lines and then also that door i was telling you about that goes behind the motor it's right here there's a couple latches you'll just pull you'll get all the stuff out which is kind of the biggest point oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you'll you'll open these latches and it just comes right out and you can get on in there and sweat your ass <laughs> That's it, man. Uh, this is that uh this is that spot i was telling you about that for the extra batteries is where those old ones were. This is just an. This is just a. It's not a live wire or anything, but that's just. I just kept them there in case I wanted to set it up later. It's ready to go. But yeah, these are two nice blocks. You just keep it tied down when batteries are in it because you don't want batteries flying around. around. Or if you get sick of the um, that Coleman propane stove, the previous owner he took out the. Um, he didn't believe in like flames on boats at all. I mean, not the best thing, but as long as you're responsible, it's not a big deal. But anyways, this is where I assumed that the old propane tank would sit. And there's a tube that goes underneath that, that gimbal. Yeah. Um, I would replace the tube as well. But it literally just goes right there. And you would, this would be where you would have gas out of the cabin. Yeah. That's a good idea. yeah. And I like having the little ones because, like, you can see there, I don't even, I don't even, like, each day I just unscrew it. And then I don't have to worry about it. That's Some days I'll have to leave it for a while. But, like, especially if I'm gone for a minute, she's like, might as well. Yeah. And it's easier than having a big one. But anyways, that's where you would, if you wanted another one or to add more space, if you're going to be off oh, grid. Yeah, for sure. And if you're off grid, like I said, highly recommend get maybe another 300 amps and then another solar. Yeah. Right. Maybe, and then maybe like a little light generator or something. And for those, those nights, AC would really feel good. Although when you're on the hook and stuff, you're always pointing into the wind. Oh, so that's good. Gotcha. Um, so that the hatches are designed to scoop it. And they have these cool uh, scoop like sails Grab that you can like tree. raise up with a halyard. Really? That literally will like capture the wind and so like flow in through the front. And wow. Okay. So, um, a lot of different stuff to learn. Oh, so much stuff. So much stuff. I learn new stuff all the time. And I've it's been eight years and I'm still learning things so on this boat. It's quiet down there. I know. It's peaceful. Hmm. It's so quiet. All right. No. I have two two masks here. Uh, I don't know, Nikki, if you want to go in too, or you're gonna stay up. Baby, you're gonna go in. It's like I want, a, I want her to go. That's just. I mean, I've got shorts on, but. Yeah, 